rock stars, Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here. And today we're going to talk about how to move between chords within a song, okay? So if you are a newbie to, I don't know, maybe, maybe intermediate, um, this is gonna be a great video for you. If you're an advanced player, this is, you'll probably be on this. Um, but I get this question all the time, especially from newbies. Uh, as you know, I teach one-on-one -on -one lessons I uh, have done it, done that for years, and it always seems to be the thing that uh, that frustrates folks because they they're able to learn their core, you know, fretting fairly quickly, and they're able to learn chords fairly quickly. But then they say to me all the time, like it's a big mystery, and I understand it because you probably feel the same way. It's probably why you're watching this video. Is you say. I can get these chords, but I can't move between them very quickly. So I don't understand that, okay? Well, guess what? That's everybody. There's nobody in the history of ever who hasn't had this issue at some point. You have it in the beginning, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you uh, how to think about this. And it really has to do with a mental practice. And it's such a, such a small routine, but it's so hard to get you there that if you really listen up and you get this routine and you practice it for like five minutes tops, but you really practice it, the thing about it is you're gonna wanna keep going around it. You wanna, it's almost like meditating. If you, <laughs> if you could just focus on this one thing for about five minutes, you will never have an issue with this again, at least in regards to practicing it. You'll be able to practice much quicker and get to your goals much quicker if you do this specific technique that I'm about to show you. It's worked for 100% mm, of my students, okay? And it's what I teach in my books and in my courses and everything else because it works every single time. So that's all there is to it. Uh, the proof's in the pudding. So, and, um, and I like pudding, okay? So here we go. So um, now I just taught uh, bad, bad Leroy Brown, okay? So uh, I'll use that one for an example today. So uh, the chords are G, uh, A, or A7, uh, B7, C, and D. The basic chords that you should know, in fact, um, they are what I, those are included in my nine essential chords, the ones that every guitar player should know. Uh, if you would like to know more about that on your on YouTube here, type in your guitar stage nine, the numeral nine. And uh, I'll show you the nine essential chords that every guitar player should know. Or you can get them free. If you go um, hit the link below at your guitar stage, you get the free ebook, then um, I will show you exactly what those chords are. Okay, so. With all that being said, let's say you came back and now you know those chords and we're going to talk about this. Okay, so what happens is you're playing along and you're not able to get to the chord in time, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to take all information and th throw it away right now except for this one piece of information. You're on the G chord. We want to go to the A7 chord, okay? I want you to take all chords, everything else you know about guitar, throw it out the window for a minute. And the only thing I want you to do is I want you to think about, if you're on the G chord, the only thing I want you to think about is the A7 chord and what it looks like. I didn't tell you to move your hand. I didn't tell you to strum. The only thing I want you to do is think about the next chord. This is the crux of the matter. This is the thing that's really, truly going, it's, this is for up in here. It has nothing to do with your hands. Okay, what I mean by this is, it has to do with the way that you're thinking about the chord before you play it. This is why it's missed by so many people because you can't just show this to somebody. You gotta get inside their head and I'm doing it right now. I'm inside your head. Okay, so, so this is what you're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna use this analogy really quickly because it's gonna help you to understand this. If we were going to traverse, traverse? Oh, do you traverse a river? I don't know. I think you traverse a mountain. I don't have time to Wikipedia it right now, but I think you can traverse a river. I think you'll let me know. But let's say we're crossing the river if we're not traversing it. And let's say there are these rocks that are going across the river. And we're on this rock, and we want to get to that rock. Would it make sense? Well, let's just say we didn't see the other rock, okay? Let's just say we're on this rock, and we want to get across to the other side. Would it make sense for us to jump off of this rock and then start looking for a rock to land on. Mind you, this is a class five river. This is a major rafting river where you're gonna 
die if you fall into the water. No, Eric, it wouldn't make sense for us to jump up in the air and then start looking for the rock. That's ridiculous. Why would you say such a thing? Why? Because you're doing it every single time you change chords. That's why you're having an issue with it. You're taking your chord, you're lifting it up, and you don't even know where you're gonna land yet. You may say, oh yeah, I know it's the A7, but you haven't mentally geared up for how your feet are gonna land on that A7 rock. You haven't thought about it, okay? And that's what, the, that's what the problem is. If you have thought about it, you haven't thought about it enough to where you've built a routine of thinking a few steps ahead every single time. The best musicians can think several steps down the line in improvisation, that sort of thing. It's almost like a great fighter where they can read the other guy and they can see his shoulder dip. That means his right hook's coming, that sort of thing. And it's all about reading the, the information before it comes, okay? But the only way to do this is to practice it. Ain't no talent gonna get you there. Um, don't even get me started on that. It has to do with practice, okay? Um, so, just like fighting or just like um, karate or anything, we gotta learn techniques. So, this is what you're gonna do. You're on this G chord, okay? This is the rock that we're on, and we're looking at that next rock. We're thinking about it. And we're saying, what, what is, first, what does the chord shape look like? Don't move your dang on hand. Okay, what does the chord shape look like? And you got it mentally in your mind, and you're saying, okay, the second and third finger are going to be used. The first and fourth finger are not gonna be used. Eventually, you won't have to think this much. And then, you're gonna visually, in your mind's eye, in your imagination, you have one. You, if, you imagine, if you've ever imagined anything, ever had a dream, you have a mind's eye. Say so use it, okay? It's your third eye. So you're gonna think about what this, um, what this chord looks like, okay? And so you're imagining it in your head before you get there, before you do anything, and then you're going to move it, okay? For those that are really newbies, you're gonna move one finger and then the next finger. Okay, and that's all you're gonna do. Ain't no strumming. Ain't no strumming in this lesson. Okay, that's all you're gonna do. So you're gonna just form the chord. Now, you're not gonna go to the B7 chord. You're gonna go back and forth between two chords. It's called transitioning, what I call transitioning. And the only thing you're gonna do is take two daggone chords, okay? Now you're on your, your A7 chord. You're gonna think about what your G chord looks like. Visualize it. Don't jump off that rock you're gonna fall into class five water, okay? Dangerous. You're gonna get stuck in a wedge. You're gonna to have to pull your body out. It won't be pretty, okay? So, you're on your A7 there, thinking about your G, thinking about it, you're thinking about it, you're seeing how your fingers are gonna form, and you're gonna make this move, okay? Now, this may seem very elementary, but if you're not doing this with everything, good guitar players are doing this, I say, Pretty much any guitar player is doing this if you've been playing for a while. They don't, they don't understand the process and how they got there, but they're doing it, okay? This is gonna help save you a ton of time. So you've got your G7, now you're thinking about your A7, and you're gonna move to it. You're not gonna move to it fast, you're gonna move to it accurately. Accuracy leads to speed. And then, in time, what's gonna happen is you're going to be able to go back and forth between these chords with a minimal amount of effort. And your strumming hand is not distracting you right now. It's just resting. It's taking a break so that your, all of your brain cells can be focused on this one little move right here. And then, so you can see how quickly that is. Okay, so that's the first part of doing this. The next part is, is you have to anticipate the chord before it comes. And you gotta be able to do this by, by counting and you gotta be able to do it by, um, by anticipating the chord. So you're thinking about the chord. So for instance, if it's one, two, three, four, Leroy Brown, baddest man in the whole damn town, right? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be like, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I have two measures to think about that chord, okay? The one, where I'm strumming the chord, is the most important part of, of any chord playing ever, in the history of ever, and will always be to the end of time till we become dust again, okay? It's so important. What I mean by that is, this part of the chord, the strum part, is the most important part. part this part here, where it's lingering out, 
it ain't that important. Watch. Bad, bad, Leroy Brown. Baddest man in the whole damn town. Badder than a old King Kong. You know, I can lift my hands up off of the guitar and it's totally fine. But if I go bad, bad, Leroy Brown. Baddest man in the whole damn town. I'm not, not sure why I'm singing that an octave low, but I am. So what I'm saying is if, you're not, if you don't hit it on the one, it's gonna sound really crappy. So you must always hit it on the one. So how you do that? Slow it down and make sure you anticipate. You're getting ready. It's like you're jumping off, you're heaving yourself, getting ready to jump off that one rock. Here we go, one, two, three. You ever do that into the pool with your buddy and then he leaves you hanging? Not cool, not cool, bro. So we're not gonna do that. We're actually gonna jump. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you're anticipating it. You're thinking about that chord before you play it, okay? So do that and then go back to the next chord, okay? So you're gonna be, you know, maybe you're doing two measures. If you can't do one measure per, then once you do two measures, then do one measure and then do faster than that and speed it up. But take your time when you're doing this. So after you do just the transitions, your next bit would be to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four. So I'm coming right there on that one, right? Very important. So you can do that with two chords only, and then you can move on with the next two. A seven, three, four, B seven, two, four, seven, three, four, B seven, three, four, A seven, three, four, and B seven, three, four, C, B seven, three, that sort of thing. And then you could break it down to one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and so on. We're complicating it slowly, slowly, slowly. That will make sure that you get this, okay? My friends, that's gonna help you a lot. I promise you if you do it, it's gonna save you so much time. Get that basic practice under your belt and it's gonna save you a ton of time. You're gonna be so happy. Okay, my friends, I'm Eric Andreas, your guitar stage. Hopefully this helped. If it did, hit thumbs up and hit subscribe if you'd like to some 700 other videos that I have here on YouTube. If you go to yourguitarstage.com, I'll give you a free ebook. And I give these three books away several times every single year. So make sure you do that. Check out the Unstoppable Guitar System. The link for that is below. You can get in there for one buck, less than a bottle of water. You shouldn't be drinking bottled water anyhow. You should have a filter and uh, not filling up the landfills, right? Okay, that's it. That's my preaching for today. Please, spay and neuter your animals. Be kind to one another. We can change this world. Don't trust the man. See you.